Okay, so the important question in this Newton's bucket lab is why does the water in the bucket seem to defy gravity when the bucket is upside down? A lot of people have interesting ideas about why this might be happening, and some of them are right, but you might be using the wrong words to describe what's happening. In order to do a good job describing what's happening to this bucket, you need force diagrams, and we need to introduce a new name of a force centripetal force. You can hear the word center in there. The centripetal force isn't a new force. It's caused by other forces. It's the add-up of all the forces acting on an object that somehow keep it going in a circle. A lot of different things can cause a centripetal force, but it's the net force of all those different things that always keep the object pointing towards the middle of that circle. When you put the bucket into a position with your arm, and swing it forward, you're creating a centripetal force. The bucket is being pulled towards the center of the circle continuously by the applied force of your arm. And so where I wrote FC for centripetal force, you could think of that as the applied force of your arm. It's not really a new force, we're just giving it a special name. So you might think, okay, centripetal force is what's making the water stay in the bucket. But actually, not exactly, because if you look at the force diagrams, at the bottom of the loop, we have a perfect balance between the centripetal force and the force of gravity, which is why the water stays in the bucket in that circumstance. But if you look at the right-hand picture at the top of the loop, it looks like gravity and the centripetal force are working together to pull everything down, and there's no upward force at all on this bucket. So how is it that anything is staying up? And that's a really interesting question. Here's another force diagram showing you the centripetal force, gravity on the bucket, and gravity on the water. I want you to think about this. The point of this picture is to point out that only the bucket is experiencing centripetal force. After all, your hand is not attached to the water. There's a normal force on the water from the bottom of the bucket and also from the sides of the bucket, but there's no centripetal force on the water. The water is not being pulled towards the center of the circle. This is important to remember in the next picture. At the top of the swing, both the bucket and the water are accelerating downward. Both of them have gravity pulling downward, but the bucket also has the centripetal force pulling it downward. Combined, those two forces make the bucket fall downward towards the earth faster than the water does. Look at these two dot diagrams and notice that the sixth dot for each of them is in a different place. Just count down. This is the sixth dot for the bucket and this is the sixth dot for the water. What that literally means is that as the bucket and the water fall towards the ground, the bucket is ahead of the water. In other words, the water can't fall out of the bucket because the bucket is falling faster than the water. Here's another way of showing the same thing. As time goes by, at the top of the twirl, the bucket and the water are both accelerating downwards. So over time, the positions of the bucket and the water are going to come down towards the ground. However, the bucket is doing that faster than the water is. So the position keeps changing over time. Notice that in the beginning, both the water and the bucket aren't moving very quickly. They're pretty much almost staying still, and they're only up there for a second or two. So overall, there's not much difference in where the bucket and the water are, but there is a slight amount of difference between where they are. All of this is because of the forces acting on the bucket and the water. Remember, the bucket has an extra force on it. It's the centripetal force, which is why the bucket moves towards the ground faster than the water does. You can see it again here in a time velocity graph. The velocity is in the negative side below zero over here, not because the object is slowing down, but because we're moving in the downward direction. 
And remember, velocity is different from speed because it has direction attached to it. So that's why I'm showing this in the bottom quadrant of the graph. The water isn't accelerating as quickly as the bucket, remember? And you can see that in how tilted these lines are. The bucket's line is tilted much more than the water's line is, and that's because the velocity of the bucket is speeding up faster than the velocity of the water is. If you picture that down here that this is maybe negative 10, again, that doesn't mean that we moved in a... Um, it doesn't mean that we moved with negative speed. And let's pretend the units are meters per second here for velocity. That's how fast we're going. We're going 10 meters per second downward. So at 10 meters per second downward, it takes the bucket less time to reach that speed than it takes the water. The water is going to take a little longer to get up to the same speed. And that's how you can interpret that graph. Anytime an object is in motion, you can bet all three of Newton, Newton's laws apply to that situation. But I'm going to pick Newton's law of inertia, the first law, to explain what's happening with our bucket of water, because I think it does the best job of explaining it. I want you to pretend that this picture is a car going around a sharp left-hand turn. As you go around the turn, let's say that foolishly you decided not to wear your seatbelt because you were in the back seat of the car. And then, as mom or dad makes this sharp left-hand turn, or perhaps an older sister or brother, you find yourself flung to the right. Here you are against the right-hand side of the car, squishing your face against the window pane. How did you get here? Well, this is what you might think of as centripetal force, but it's the centripetal force on the car that's making you feel that way. Really what's happening is your inertia is carrying you straight ahead. That's the last direction you were going in when suddenly the car turned out from under you. So you just kept going straight, but now straight in front of you, instead of the back seat of the car or mom or dad's headrest, in front of you is a window, which is where your face gets pressed up against. This interesting effect of inertia also explains why the water stays in the bucket. Now pretend that this picture is buckets going around in a circle, and the dot isn't you getting pressed against the window, it's the water getting pressed against the bottom of the bucket. The bottom of the bucket is where this water was headed the last time it got a push. And then the bucket suddenly, because of its centripetal force, wound up meeting it where it was already going. This is what keeps the water in the bucket and what makes you go flying into the window when you don't wear your seatbelt.